Hey Richard, how are you doing? Hey Michael, pretty good. How are you this morning? Oh, just just doing fantastic because it's release day. Ah, I love release day. Yes. And I was so excited. I could hardly sleep last night. I got up early this morning. It's still dark here, Mike. It, it's, it is. I mean, I woke <laughs> up and you know it was still dark. I came into the office, but I have a little bit of light now. But you must be completely in the dark out in Vegas right now. It is. I think uh, sunrise out here is about 625 or 630 a.m. So by yeah. the time we're finished here, the sun will be up. I'll let it hit me in the face, and I'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm on my second cup of coffee, so we'll uh, <laughs> keep keep the day rolling. It's a it's gonna be a fun day at On Shape. So you bet. Um, welcome to the live stream, everybody. We have a lot of features to go over. I think it's gonna take. I don't know. It takes as long as it takes. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> <Okay>. Exactly. We're here <laughs> until the end. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, John McClary. It's six miles tall. Good to see you folks this morning. And thanks for joining us. Uh, chat with us if you like. Let us know how you're feeling today and give us some uh, give us some feedback on some of these changes that you see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, this is the first update in a year. You know, we yep. usually have, a, you know, the, the track record, at least for the last few years that I've noticed is that it's always a pretty action packed customer focused uh, release, you know, with lots of functionality across the entire product line. And as Onshape has grown over the years, adding Render Studio and things like publications and simulation and things like that, you know, the updates uh, seem to be getting bigger as well, yep. as, uh, as you probably noticed. So what should we start with Richard? We should probably just jump into the very first one yeah. on the list. And, always always uh, best to start at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me uh, present my screen here. Let's find the right window. All right. So there we are. We got. We uh, you know, I, you know, we we like to to kind of highlight some of the things that I think you know a lot of customers you know that that have the most customer hits or will drive the most excitement. So so these were the three that I thought of that that should be kind of highlighted. But of course, all of these functions are, are are very deep and important, and some of them are you know that didn't make my little top three here are actually huge improvements yep. that that really change the way you can get work done, especially in. Uh, in part studios here. So I'm going to start with that one. We're going to start with context instance visibility. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's funny. So I don't do a lot of in context design yet, Mike. And, and I looked through this video. I actually watched this video twice. And while I can see, I can see how great it is. I know this is something really special, but I haven't quite figured out how to use it yet. So why don't, right. you, why don't you tell everybody how great it is while I sit here and learn from you? <laughs> all right, let, let's let's explain what what all this means, right? So let's say, you know, here we are. We have an assembly, right? And of course, there there are assemblies that need to reference other objects for their existence, right? You know, if I or parts for their existence, right? So I have, I have this cover. This cover needs to have two cutout holes for these uh, heating elements that are in in here. Is some sort of scientific you know, heating instrument, right? You know, for you put the, you know, the flask in here or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a chemist, but, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, you know, we got the, uh, you know, we need to drive the hole based on the diameter of in the location of these uh, elements. So you see that little arrow there. 
that denotes that there is an in-context reference somewhere in this design. So you see that arrow, right? Yep. Great. So anytime you create a new context in an assembly, you know, it's taking the visual kind of state that it's currently in to kind of give you that work for editing. So let's say I wanted to, you know, edit that context or create a new context. You know, let's, let's pretend the context doesn't exist. I'm going to, you know, um, create a new context right here just by right clicking on that cover part while I'm in the assembly. And it brings me back to the part studio from whence it was designed. Okay. And it's showing me, you see what's showing up in, in the shadow here, the, in the graphics, it's showing me the, uh, the heating element, the uh, component, right? So it, it brings it in and it shows it, you know, shows me the parts that are currently turned on uh, from the assembly, but also shows me the part studio in, in, in this overlaid state. And, you know, we've done some things over time to kind of show, right, you know, how you can kind of hide and show it completely, right? So we've had that for a little while. But what is new is the ability to right click and, you know, uh, edit, you know, the display of some of the parts, make it easy to bring in and out parts that you might want to reference. Because just, you know, if you think about it, like, you know, how often do you know every single piece of information about a design at all times? You, yeah. you don't. <laughs> so you, know, you, you might design a few more parts in the future and you want to update the context and those items aren't in display. So you want to bring items in and out of display to reference. So um, that's what uh, these are here. I haven't done any context edits yet. So let me uh, go back to the one that is already ready to go. Take that cover and I'll edit the interface context that I've, you can name contexts to be whatever you want, you know, sure. in context modeling, you know, this is where I'm modifying the interface and this is where I'm modifying the hardware, right? Just, Very, like, name, yep, just like naming your features and naming your parts and yep. Exactly. So I'm going to, you know, go to the interface context where I'm editing the interface between the, you know, the heating element and the, uh, the cover. So let me bring that up while I take a sip of coffee. <clears throat> so that time I'll really say, uh, Meantime, I'll say hi to Carrie Bettenhausen. And uh, Carrie, you're welcome for the hoodie. I was going to ask if you got that at the user group meeting later on today, which uh -huh. brings me to, I'll go ahead and mention that and I'll throw a little link into the chat there. We are having an online user group meeting today at noon Eastern. Matt Rohr will be doing a presentation on assembly tips. So by all means, join us if you can. Matt Rohr is a great, great community person, has uh, helped the CAD community for a long time. And uh, great, great respect for Matt, everything he does. You know, he was a former SOLIDWORKS uh, user group president. You know, he's been at Onshape now for a couple of years now and uh, yep. helping. Amateur stand-up comedian, too. Not too many people know that. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he's a pretty funny guy. <laughs> um, all right, back Back to the context. So, oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to take away from your, your, your <laughs> momentum there, Mike. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, you gave me a, a chance to breathe there for a second. Um, so now we can hide context instances right from you know here, right clicking, but we can also hide and show context instances from this uh, three dot menu from these uh. ellipses here. Um, so what this will do, and uh, yeah, let me just uh, show what. Uh, what Neil has here because his example is actually much nicer. Can you still see this? I made it full screen. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so when you click that three dot menu, he's in the closed position of this, like, you know, albuterol inhaler type thing. Um, you can see the hide show context menu and it brings you the full assembly list into your part studio, essentially. So you can actually kind of hide and show the display of the contextual part of the assembly. So, and you can still use all your filters and everything. You might want to just show hidden parts. You might want to search based on name, right? Um, all of this is here for you to give you the best experience to reference just the geometry that you need at that moment um, instead of like having all of the parts there, which makes it hard to select or, or whatever. Nice. Now, okay, I understand a little bit better now. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's giving you deliberate ways of doing your contextual model instead of it being a free for all like yep. it is in most CAD systems. Most companies that I've talked to like you know get a little iffy when they talk about in context or top down modeling because of some of the problems it, it, it causes because of the file references that can change and update in unexpected ways. Onshape has solved this problem by putting named context that only change on demand, you know, and when you right. ask and you have all these great controls now where you can hide and show the different elements yep. that, uh, that go into it. That was, this is one of the comments I saw, um, related to this, uh, to this update here. So here I can, yeah, I'll show yep. it here. On my he needed, he, by golly, he, he wanted it yesterday and we gave it to him today. <laughs> Sorry. We're a little late. <laughs> <laughs> Um, glad, glad you have it now though. And I'm, I'm glad it's here too. This is a big, uh, big improvement. This really increases the usability and, uh, you know, more people I'm sure will, will use it now. Yep. Hey, thanks for joining us, Nick. Welcome. Good morning to you. Nick. All right, let's go to the next item. Mutual trim. Okay. You know, Every single surfacing update and improvement just makes it easier for a guy like me who has a really tough time with surfacing to do surfacing. So I, I'm glad to see these every single time they come out. And I actually go in and I try these things. Now, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the kind of CAD user that's going to go in and create a surface model from scratch, at least not yet. But when these kinds of changes come up and when I see them, I go in and try them just to try and get a feel and trying to improve my skills in surfacing a little bit. You know, it's, it was always hard for me to just get started on surfacing. But by learning these little tricks and, and seeing these little updates gives me a better understanding of the process behind creating a surface model. So yeah. I'm getting better. I'm getting there. Uh, still have a ways to go, but uh, Onshape's helping me out quite a bit. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to see any kind of surfacing improvements. And, you know, we could do all these things a little bit before, right? I mean, you could trim surfaces, for example. And, yeah, you, you would just, in this situation that, that we're going to see here, that, that Lindsay is going to share here, um, you know, you could obviously trim surfaces and get to the end result in, in on shape, you know, since, you know <laughs> since we had surfacing. But... You know, it, it might have taken a couple more steps, but here we have this nice, you know, elegant mutual trim, you know, that just will you know, trim those two parts in, in one or two kind of surfaces in, in one operation, right? So uh, you have all the controls you'd expect to flip surfaces back and forth. So, she, you know, uh, Lindsay took the, uh, the mutual trim. It actually is its own feature in the um, nice. surface kind of yeah. list. You know, it's not a uh, part of an existing feature. Um. And, you know, she used that mutual trim feature and then she split the surface away, you know, to, to create that kind of shape at the end there to kind of taper it uh, down. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Here's a, another comment from the forums this morning. <laughs> One of my favorites. Oh, goodness. We seem to have lost Michael. Well, you know what? Michael does all the driving on these uh, live stream events. I'm not sure I could pick up where he left off. So we'll give him a couple of seconds to come back. In the meantime, uh, I'll keep promoting that user group meeting that we have today, noon Eastern time. Matt Rohr with Assembly Tips. Uh, we start those meetings 15 minutes early for some networking. Uh, so come on in, meet some of the folks from the forums. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun at these meetings. They're online. They last about an hour. So... Lunchtime is a good time to, to join us there. Uh, let's take a quick look at a couple of the other uh, the other comments and some of the things that we're going to see a little bit later when Mike comes back. Uh, I think this is going to be particularly exciting for our EDU users. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, simulation has now been added to the EDU. Um, Oh, all right, Michael is back, so we'll go yeah. ahead and uh, let him continue where he left off. 
I just kind of briefly briefly mentioned that uh, that the simulation is now included in the uh, EDU enterprise accounts, uh, but I didn't get too much further into that. And while we were gone, I basically just pumped the user group meeting. So uh, wherever you left off, go ahead and pick it back up, Mike. All right, thanks, Richard. Sorry <laughs> about that. Just a momentary, uh, you know, glitch in the matrix or whatever it was. So, um, all right, let me uh, share the screen again. All right. Hey, Eduardo, good to see you here. Welcome. Hey, hey. Buenos, buenos tardes. All right. So there we are. I'm back on my uh, homepage there in my OnShape account. Okay. So we were at, we we're just finishing up with mutual trim, I yep. think. Let's, let's talk about more stuff where you trim stuff, but more in a mechanical kind of gritty way, right? With some frame mel members and elements with our new frame gusset tool. Time. Really uh, I, I watched this video and immediately went over to my tiny house that I had de designed in frames and tried this out. It is so slick the way this was implemented. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, we, you know, <laughs> development does such a great job with this stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, we, it's, uh, you know, continuing to add to the, the frame weldment style environment, right? You know, I think we recently added, uh, you know, the, um, end caps right you yep, know to, yep. to end caps system. was last release yep end caps was last release and the end caps were done really well i thought too remember how they like you know had circular style and <clears throat> rectangular and all, all the different options were there this yep. is and, no no different no yeah it, this is even better i think i, I you know just <laughs> like i say I, I couldn't wait to try this one out so let's let's build a uh, frame here i have the beginning you know of a frame i've created i used a custom feature here just to kind of give me a 3d space to work in and I'll use some rectangular tubing here. And uh, I'll just uh, go around the top here. Maybe we'll uh, center it right there. And we'll add another frame element for the legs, of course. All right, so we have the legs. That's looking good. Everything's yep. uh, looking the way I want. You know, we'll hide my uh, little help there. And we're going to tell it to... Uh, you know, get some some gussets in there, right? Yeah. So let, let's add some gussets. So it should be right in, you know, right in the same general yep. region. There's end cap, gusset, and everything. Of course, you can just, you know, start typing it in as well or program it to your S key pop-up toolbar. Um, but, you know, you pick an edge, essentially. And it's yep. smart enough to find the center, you know, of it, right? Yeah, do you want it to be triangle, rectangle, right? That's kind of a chunky uh, thing right now. <laughs> let's uh, let's change the thickness of that and make it a little more realistic so we can cut it on a flame cutter or torch or something. Uh, yeah, we want it to be two inches. Yeah, the, what do you think? Do we, uh, you know, what, do we, what else do we want on this thing? We want yeah, center. We can offset it or align it. Yeah, put it you yeah. can put it anywhere you want. Right. See, I can offset it from the center at yep. one inch. Yeah, maybe you want to do that. So that's pretty easy. You can also use these on-screen manipulators, manipulators. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, so let's just go back to zero there. Thickness triangle. Yeah, you know, we can do a rectangle with a chamfer as well. You know, sometimes that's nice, right? So I'll just yep. put a quarter inch. Uh, or maybe something bigger, one inch. Looks better. Um, so I like that, and I yep. want the same one over here too. Yeah, boom. I was going to make sure that you did that because you don't just have to add one gusset at a time. You can do them all in one one command. That is just so slick. I wonder if this, no, I'm not going to try weird stuff now. <laughs> Look at that. Anywhere you want those. Look at them. Yeah, they're just going right in. All right, there we I, may go back in I may go back into my tiny house document and just do this all day long. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, you need to just tell to uh, you know build the uh, the cut list. There, I'll select all the frames. They go into the cut list uh, right here. So we have the three sizes, and then we would add a, a second um, cut list item for the gusset. Uh, you know, right here. So I would just pick uh, the uh, the gusset component. Actually, it's picking it up now, and I would add a. Let's just add that. You know, one of the one of the coolest things I found about frames in on shape is you don't necessarily need a sketch line to create a frame member. You can That's actually right. use the edge of another frame member to create the new frame member. That that just blows me away. That's right. You can just pick, you know, a point in space. Yep. And another point in space like yep. that. Awesome. Just, just awesome. 
Yeah, yeah. So you don't need to create these crazy 3D sketches with all these things, you know. (laughs) And I still haven't gotten over how how well we handled the manipulators, uh, being able to, to, you know, center or or, or move those frame elements where you need them. It's just so slick the way frames works. Yeah, totally. All right. Any other comments coming in? Well, while we were talking, uh, Vajrang snuck in on us. (laughs) Oh, how are you doing, Vajrang? Vajrang. Vajrang, in case uh, you're not familiar with who Vajrang is, is our VP of product development here, R&D here at Onshape. Um, he uh, used to be have that same role at SolidWorks before yep. joining us, um, just like many other <laughs> folks on our team. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, so always, nice it's always fun to pop into a company meeting, you know, because we do new, new employee um, introductions it, just about every week, I guess. And it's fun to pop in and hear somebody announced as a new employee that you've known for, you know, 20 years from, from the yeah. cat industry. So, yeah, it's so nice. It's so yep. nice. It's a, it's a small world. <laughs> yep. And Vash, he did mention that there's uh there's something he noticed our network glitch here yeah. um, when you had to pop out quick and there's something, something a little bit uh, further down the line that we'll talk about. So, ah, very good. Yeah. That, yep. that yep. Kind of handy. Yeah. All right, let's talk about making more uh, parts, and parts have holes, <laughs> so um, it's important to have a very good hole tool that provides as much information as possible to get your work done, right? So um, if you look at this uh, particular example, and I like, I'm going to play this example because it's, uh, it's a fond uh, demo example that yep. our customers seem to like, <laughs> and you'll see why in a minute. But yeah, we've had the hole tool for quite some time, um, and now we have embedded tolerances built in to the whole feature. Yep. Um, so, you know, this way it can drive forward your, your uh, proper documentation of your holes. So when you machinist will drill the holes, they'll know exactly what to do. And you don't have to like spend extra time on the drawing uh, to add this information. So yep. well, let's uh, apply a symmetrical deviation tolerance uh to you know various things in the hole you know the the diameter you can see it's showing up in the uh hole table actually let me uh, go back to that really quickly um you know it shows it to you in the 3d model right so we we have the whole feature so imagine sharing this with somebody uh you're sharing with the machine shop you hit the share button share with the machine shop hey i want uh, I, I would love a quote for for this particular design um and, you know and here's and here's my one tight tolerance that you need to that you need to follow mm-hmm. uh, and the 3d model is the rest of the uh at the information beautiful yeah. no draw yeah. no drawing necessary i know that really disappoints you probably richard but... uh, a little bit but, <laughs> 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 but uh yeah with no drawing needed for that <laughs> obviously you, you'll get this information forward but you know this is like you know really cool that was the first thing i saw when i yep. was looking at this earlier was that you could share information, you know, in a, uh, in a way that uh, is very on shapey. Um, and of course, and now, you know, obviously that person is going to create a fully functional dimension drawing at the end of the project so that we'll have some, you know, paper trail. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the agile <laughs> way. Um, but yeah, so obviously the, the tolerances will come through. Uh, both types of tolerances were mixed in together with this particular one. And, you know, so that's interesting as well. Yeah. So all uh, about flexibility and, and allowing people to, to create the kind of documentation or provide the kind of information to their manufacturers that, that they want to provide. Oh, absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. So whole tool is, uh, keep, keeps getting, uh, attention rightly. So this right. is this is so cool i you know i had a lot of excitement I, I was really excited when i saw the uh the gussets and then i scrolled down and i looked at this and my first thought the first word that that popped into my head was clever and, and then i pop over to the forums and i see somebody else mention the same thing that that the measured variable shortcuts are very clever so yeah yeah it's a it's saving time you know you're gonna be able to uh, you know, we've had the functionality for a little while now to uh, create these measured variables on the fly, right? Um, yep. Now you can, you know, you, I don't know what's beyond on the fly, but <laughs> 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 um, it, it's beyond well, that. 
It is. It, it just means you can fly a little faster here. Ah, there you go. Yeah, we're, we're going from the speed of sound to, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe not speed of light. I'm not sure. But let's uh, let's do a measurement, right? You know, we got a measurement here. We got a measurement here. Shows me the, the distance right here, right? 74 inches. But yep. I have a little button right there. Add this variable right on the fly, just nice. like that, right? Uh, it's even more impressive when you do it in some kind of, like, weird... Know, kind of three dimensional uh, way because it's providing you all the measurements, you know, yep. right here. Um, you know, it's a measured distance value. It understood that automatically. You would just give it some sort of name. You know, the best thing you can do is name you know, these things, of course, to, you know, to work on it. Actually, that was a bad one I put in there. You can do it here, or you can do it when you hit the tape measure. measure it brings up like, the yep. full, you know, brings up the full thing, right? So yep. you have the list, and then of you've got the option like for, yep, for creating variables from all of the different dimensions that are that are listed. That's just that's, that's yep. Right. Cle clever is is the proper word for this uh, for this update. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So description, uh, we'll call it a diagonal length. D I A. Uh, and the name, we'll just say D-I-A-L-E-N. Now we have the uh, the variable in the list to you. So it's very nice. Very nice, exactly. Yep. Really, really clever. All right. This is something that I've been looking for for, for quite some time uh, personally. Uh, the ability to use a reference image uh, in an assembly uh, as well. So We've been able to use uh, reference sketches and assemblies, and this is a, a common practice when you have, uh, you know, some sort of layout or something like that, where you want to like insert, you know, some sort of sketch layout of something. Let's see, I, I have a sketch that I could probably bring in you know, to the assembly. Let's see, let's uh, let's actually use our better example that yeah, Kevin made here because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have one ready to go on this particular one, but. You know, there's an image uploaded to an on shape document here, right? So, you know, that uh, image happens to be in a sketch and in another part studio. And we're bringing that sketch in. And obviously, you know, you know, we're not doing floor plans all the time in on shape, but, you know, this is a quick example to kind of show, you know, what this means. But if you were doing like a factory layout and you had something or a photo, or you want to kind of place objects in general relation to each other, or if you wanted to just add more detail you know, yep. to your design, make it uh, a bit more understanding. Right. And, you know, I'm one of those guys that does architectural layouts all the time. <laughs> I mean, you use the tools that you have, right? Yep. Uh, yep. You know, you, you know, if you, if you do this like once, once a year, you know, there's no need to buy a separate tool to do that. Right. So, um, yep. but yeah, this is uh you know, there's many, many use cases for putting an image into an assembly um, for for illustration purposes, for reference purposes, yep. for uh, there's a number of things that it'll be helpful for. So we, we hope to see some images that you share with us where, where those are uh, there. Let us know how it works. This one's a very helpful uh, new improvement, the duplicate exploded view. Yep, and another one that got some great comments up here on the forums. So if you know, if I wanted to, yeah, you know, let's open up my pulse oximeter here. I think I have an exploded view in there. I'll wow, I think I've seen that model before, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to pull this out every so often, and uh, yeah, this one has a few uh, exploded view steps uh, already uh, in here. So I will, you know, here's, you know, here's one exploded view step that shows how I can. You know, just remove the cable, and then this is the more you know disassembling the whole pulse oximeter. So maybe I want to do something similar to this, but different, right? Instead of like recreating all these steps, which isn't that hard, but you know you already have them, so why yeah. not uh, use them, right? So I can just uh, uh, duplicate, you know, that right there, um, and you know give it a name, and I'm going to call this assemble pulse oximeter. So just uh, do this. Just reorder a few things here. Let's see if I did it. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> if you enough, did it I, was, 
Uh, maybe not, uh, but <laughs> but I it think, would certainly be I think easier. We all than... get the idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, right. maybe you don't need a certain step, you know, in in another process, right? You know, mm-hmm. I don't need this step, I don't need that step, and it's gonna these are gonna. And stay. you can add steps too. And you can add steps, of course, too. Yeah. Um, let me just turn off those connectors. There we are. Um, the nice thing about this is it works with all your configurations of the assembly, right? So if you create, you know, these different exploded views, um, it works with all configurations of your assembly. You don't have to create one for each one. Wonderful. Drawings, drawing improvements, Richard. Uh, always, I will take any single drawing improvement that we can ever put in there. Uh, and these are two really good ones. I mean, uh, obviously, especially for people like me that that really love to create drawings, we want to create nice, beautiful drawings. We want them to be accurate. We want them to be visually accurate as well. Um, so this is this is good for me. I like it. Yep. Yep. So yep. you know, this is a technically correct representation of uh, the external threads so uh, that we recently added to the drawings there. So looks good. Yep. Uh, and the diameter, same here. Just, yep. Just, this just, is good stuff too. Yep. More ability to customize and, and do things exactly the way you want to do them. Yep. Yep. So, you know, sometimes you want to show, you know, the dimension line going all the way across. There are certain drafting standards, ISO standards where it's required. Um, so you have full control over this now. You just select your dimension and you, know, you have the show dimension line option now. Yep as a uh, drawing property that you can include in your template. So you don't have to do this every time. This is right. You, know, you can set this in your template and save your drawing template uh, DWT file right into your on shape system. And uh, that would be, you know, set from that point forward. Of course you can do it as a style option independently uh, like we're showing here now. Um, so you have both choices per, per your drafting standard or a, a one-off if you, if you need it. Feature script has some new container functions. Um, I so, know, yeah, I know several people that are going to be very excited about that. All the documentation's there. So, you know, this will make it easier to uh, perform calculations. You won't have to do as much manual work. Um, things that, you know, kind of in the re- realm of data management now um, publications, right? We, we've introduced publications a little while ago as a very clever way of sharing a collection of items in one document. You can create a single publication document that has things from all, you know, many different documents at the release state of your choice. And you can share that so that people can work. You know, this is a perfect way of sending out a quote package, yeah. right? Uh, you know, to a, a vendor, right? You know, because you're putting it all together and it's set to that named released mm-hmm. version and that's it. And they can't see any of the releases, other releases or anything, just what they need to work on. So obviously it's good to make it visually easy to use for the people that need it, right? Because the people that use publications and consume them are not going to be like the general day-to-day on shape users, we right. think, right? So um, in this case, it's it's just uh, easy now, just like the other documents to set a thumbnail image you know, on the publication, they used to have like a publication icon, but right. now you can set it as a, uh, um, you know, whatever image you wish, like the rendered yep. image or whatever. So easy enough. This one, this one received just a very little mention, but I think this is my f- absolute favorite one in the whole release, believe wow. it or not. Yeah. Um, the ability to search for categories. Categories are very powerful in Onshape. Um, if... I were in this clip probe and and I'm going to sneeze just a second. All right. I didn't sneeze. Damn it. All right. <laughs> um, where was I? Oh yeah. So we were going to categories categories. Yeah. Wow. That sneeze really took over my brain. Um, <laughs> We're going to set some categories on these parts. Like these are injection molded parts, right? You know, these three parts, maybe we had sheet metal parts somewhere else. Actually, let me go to uh, to the category list in my uh, company to show you my categories. This is my kind of demonstration company, you know, that I've set up to, to kind of mirror what a real life company would look like. And here are the, you know, of course you have custom properties, right? You know, material, cost, you know, whatever 
properties you want. And you can categorize these properties so that if you have a forging, you're only getting certain properties or if you're getting an injection molded part. You know, so if I create a category for parts uh, and I call it um, injection molded. And we'll make that active. The parent category is going to be a part. And these are the properties that it's going to take. And you could give it additional properties, you know, if you wanted to, like, you know, how we disposition it or something. So, so I have that category. This is advanced data management. That category can now be set, right? And I want that part, that part, this part, and this part. Actually, not that part. That's going to be metal. Outer support. There we are. We'll go to the properties of this in the part studio, and you'll see category. Nice. And I can say injection molded, right? Apply. So that's an injection molded part now in the system, right? And that's, you know, if I were to go into the properties of one of these parts, you know, I, I would get different, uh, I have the disposition list here. And I, now this this is only available in release. You know, the way I set this is only available in versions. So that's why it's uh, not showing <laughs> as, a, as a choice right now. Um, so that's how you create and set categories. Now you can search category and let me just refresh. Injection molded. There it is. I'm going to find all injection molded items in my system. And you see how fast that Quick. was. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, that's just insane. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you can search. And then, of course, you get all the information about it on the side, right? You now, here's my entire release history for that bottom clip. And we have this beautiful history of what's going on. Um, you know, where is it being used? Uh, the properties of it, right? I can edit those data card kind of properties right here. You know, so this this is like a big data management yeah. helper for sure. That's you huge. Know. And I'll just built right into Onshape. Yeah. Yeah. Render Studio. Richard. I'm actually getting better at rendering. I'm starting to learn some things. Um, I, you know, I, we did a, a little holiday ornament kind of kind of thing in the forums and People jumped up, and I, I, I think I created a really nice one. My little bubble ornament. I was very pleased with it, very proud of the render that I uh, ended up with, and uh, actually used it in a blog post. You can you can find that uh, that blog post of mine on onshape.com today, uh, talking about a little sneak ba sneak peek back at 2022 and a look forward at 2023. So I hope you all take a look at that. Awesome. Yes, please do. Let's let's do quick rendering here so these these parts should have materials let me go to my uh part mass uh, custom table here that i have and i can see all my parts are set abs plastic rubber right let's yep. uh as they should be <laughs> yes absolutely and, and it makes sense that you get the right weights and measures and your properties you can search yeah. for you know things in your early um uh, complete bill of materials i mean bill yeah. materials right yep so here I'm going to uh, set this as another material. Let's just, for the heck of it, make it look really different and weird. We'll go to the Onshape Material Library, and I will set this as uh, some sort of, uh, you know, we're going to make this an upgraded model here. It's going to have um, aluminum, you know, some nice aluminum right here. And we'll set this right here, this photo cell as, and we'll make it uh, some kind of glass of some sort. I just want to see what happens. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's create a render studio, add that right to my document. Create, you know, using that part studio that I was just in. Yeah, I'm just gonna go coarse for now, just go wicked fast. As they say here in Boston. <clears throat> and while that's uh, processing there, we'll welcome Michael Pasco. 
Good to see you, Michael. Michael's going to be hosting a one of our online user group meetings coming up uh, late February, early March. And uh, we're going to be talking about the render battle, render battle number two that happened also in the forums. You know, um, for folks that, that don't visit the forums very often, obviously, there's, it's a great place to get to your questions answered. It's a great place to find information. But there are also a lot of fun things that go on in the forum um, on shape users like to have these little challenges. They th throw these little things out there and people participate and it's a lot of fun. So uh, thank you, Michael, for getting the render battle going and thanks in advance for hosting a user group meeting. Yes, thank you, Michael. As you can see here, um, the material did come through with a blue tinge. We have a blue anodized aluminum apparently nice. now on our thing because I had set the color originally as a bluish part. Yep. You know, I gave it that color and it's uh, given me the aluminum uh, material uh, on top of that. So you can see the kind of specularity, the, the kind of shininess of that uh, particular thing right there. Yep. So sorry for the coarseness there. I just wanted it to, I just wanted to pop open really quick. But um, that's essentially what's happening here, right? You know, if you, know, you set your materials here in the, in the bomb, in the assembly, or wherever you want to set your, your materials, like, like Neil and, or actually Paul, Paul, this, Paul Simone. Um, you know, he's setting it right here in the bill of materials. He's uh, got a piece of wood here. He's going to drill through. He's going to set the uh, material as birch in the on shape library, the on shape library, and then he's going to set a couple other uh, material appearances for uh, for this. He's setting the color as I had mentioned. He's creating the render studio, and it should all be there. And of course, he's going to you know show it much better than I am right now. So. Um, yeah, there's and, the, the and, wood right there. Yeah, and and this is great for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're adding material properties and and appearance properties to a model, those should show up downstream no matter what you're doing. So that's a good thing that we have this. Secondly, this is a great way to just do some quick renders that are going to be probably would be end up being close to what to your final render. You know, you when you're creating those final renders for you know publication magazines, you know whatever they're going to be used for downstream. You, certainly want to get in and and work with the controls uh, and work with the you know the proper environments and, and and proper appearances but you know for a quick render to see what your what your product's going to look like at the end as long as you've got your material properties set this is a great thing to have absolutely absolutely makes it way faster way faster um Enterprise publication dashboards are now a thing. So I have not had a chance to look at this one yet. So let me uh, take a look. And this will really be a first reaction here. Um, so uh, as you know, you know, publications are a way to very easily share quotes and information. And here is, a, you know, one particular publication and what's in it, who it's been shared wow. with, where oh. it has been viewed from, right? Um, so you have total very high level information about what's going on you know this is part of the enterprise package of course yeah. on shape enterprise provides the analytics um so you can make better business decisions about things going on in your engineering department uh so this is obviously a huge help you know for people in uh, like a purchasing department or an engineering management role where they're they want to see what's happening with the data that's flowing outside of the organization it's very important of course and consumer product design where everybody's trying to beat each other on delivery and whatever yep. the latest next gadget is. You know, we are, we are just at CES, right? Richard yep. and I at, in yep. Vegas seeing all the, the cool, uh, the cool new uh, trends in electronics, consumer electronics. So, you know, it's every year, you know, you, you need to make sure your data flows in a secure way. And, and this kind of helps you with that. Right. And that's a nice segue into promoting our next episode of the Innovators Insider Podcast, which will drop next Thursday. Uh, Mike and I spent a few days at CES. Mike came out to Las Vegas. We had a lot of fun. So uh, join us for that podcast and hear all about it. Yes, yes. Lot, lots to share. Uh, performance updates are always welcome. Right. Always. It's like, you know, good, what, what's that line? Good news is always rewarded and bad news <laughs> is always punished. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I think it's John Herstick that I've that I've heard said this the most over the years. It can never be fast enough. He always says. Yeah. Yeah. But by that, golly, on shape is really fast. So, um, yeah, if it gets much faster. I won't be able to keep up with my eyes. 
well, <laughs> you know, there's, <laughs> there's always situations that we're learning that, that, you know, we need to improve on. So, um, this is one of those situations, right. You know, where, you know, if you had an assembly with a ton of holes in it, right. You know, yep. the, uh, performance might be a, a little laggy, right. With a lot of hidden lines, you know, kind of makes sense, but, um, we've improved that. So we found a way of improving that. So that's, uh, that's really good. Um, also, you know, if you're, you know, <laughs> related to my issue here at, at the corporate HQ here, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm on wireless and stuff, so I, I didn't have time to plug in. I'm, I'm roving around the building. Right. So, you know, I don't know if I have the best internet in this particular spot that I'm in or not. And I lost my internet connection halfway through the show, mm -hmm. but that's okay. And if I was doing design work, I would probably get a little indication that that was going to happen or <laughs> because <laughs> Onshape would have been telling me that, hey, you know, your your, your internet connection is getting a little laggy. Uh, you, know, you might want to contact your, uh, um, you know, figure out what's going on, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. it'll, it'll, uh, it'll let you know, you know, if you're, if you have a poor connection, you can reach out to your IT department, figure out what's going on. Um, maybe I'll do that after call yeah. <laughs> you yeah. if you're if you're seeing this little icon on a regular basis then uh, yeah certainly time to check some some things out yeah 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 so yeah there's stuff you know there's things that we can do and there are things that that you need to do on your side yep. so you know this is one of those things that can help in those situations and just as as an aside i love that little symbol i'm not crazy about the red exc exclamation point i never want to see that but i've always been a fan of the wireless symbol you know i, I don't know it's just it, 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 it feels like you know we're I I, I, yep. I know what you mean. I can't put my finger on it either. Richard. There you go. <laughs> There's just something about it, right? All right. Ah. Let's talk about on shape and education. Yeah, you know, we we actually do a lot on the podcast with education, we and do. Uh, it's about time we started talking about it in the what's new updates because there's a lot of things happening in on shape for the education uh, version, the education enterprise version. Yep. Right. Um, we, we listened and, you know, we, we saw in the forums that, that education enterprises would love to have access to the on shape simulation capabilities and, uh, and it's here now. Yeah. So have at it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> hey, it just, it just gives those, you know, those students, the uh, high school students, col college students, uh, one more opportunity to learn something, uh, before they get into industry and have to start learning it from there. So a little, That's right. a little, a little heads up. That's right. So we have, you know, so many schools using Onshape. It's, uh, yeah. this is going to be a big, big win, I think, for, for all the students and, and educators uh, understanding what simulation and stress analysis and, is all about. So can't wait to, to see the stories uh, as they come out. Yep. And if you are a student or an educator and you're listening to us today, uh, there will be a education Onshape user group meeting coming up later this month. Uh, on shape.com you'll find user groups at the bottom of the page and you can find the calendar there so click on the uh click on the link you'll see the agenda and there's a registration link for you right there yeah also in education in, and this was released in one of the last updates before this one was the ability to you know have a, a dashboard of your classes right imagine being an educator and having all your student assignments at your fingertips all in the on shape system without having to deal with Google Docs type systems or, or whatever it is to, to or manage walking, your, or walking your around the classroom, looking over people's shoulders. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, wherever you are, I mean, class, classwork can be done wherever you want now with Onshape. You don't have to go to the CAD lab anymore. You can just uh, be in your dorm or wherever you are on the beach, you know, and uh, get your work done. The classes dashboard, and I'll play this here so you can see what it looks like. Um, you have a classes uh, dashboard and you get analytics about your classes directly here in the side panel in the Onshape uh, classes panel. Yep. And this is available for Onshape Education Enterprise, okay? Yep. And here yep. this class is made up of all those students, right? Michael Michael has a, a comment on how ED users will appreciate this and uh, will boost Onshape's presence in ECU, which he misspelled presence and then corrected it, but Frankly, Michael, you were probably right. This is a present for the EDU <laughs> yes. folks. Yeah, it's uh, it really makes on shape like you know, like come on, like why would you use anything else at, at this point? Because I mean, you know, you can you have all of the process, and we listen to teachers and educators, you know, in, in building this, and yep. and and this is made for 
them exactly yeah, in their yeah. workflow. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I'm lucky. I get to talk. I get to talk to a lot of educators, um, on shape educators, and everybody's going to be really, really happy with the things that are coming out in this release. So. Yeah, yeah, and this has been in, and the, they made some updates to the UI to make it easier to use, and slide panels around and stuff. Hey, did you know that on, we have on shape for Android? I did know that, Michael. Okay. In fact, uh, I've pulled my phone out many, many times to show somebody my little tiny house uh, document. So that's right. That's right. Yeah. So OnShape has a dedicated version for Android devices, whether you're using a Samsung phone or a weird tablet or whatever <laughs> thing you have, Android, it's going to work. Android has a wide variety of. Yeah you know, devices that, that run on it uh, of different scales and sizes and folding phones and all sorts of stuff. So it's a, you know, on shape, you know, has to, to make sure that, that we uh, work with, with that on the Android uh, platform. Now we've added support for parametric replicate, uh, which we had in, in the browser version for quite a little while now, as well as the, the mass properties uh, override, yep. right? So you can do that directly from your uh, Android based device so good good and, stuff and we're there glad, for you. we're glad the override is there but you should never use it <laughs> <laughs> try not to try not to but you know if you're downloading something that's just the envelope of a, an engine yeah. model a cummins engine or whatever it might be you don't have all the internals mm -hmm. but you do know the weight and the center of mass you all that you can override I, that. I, I just but yes there are plenty of reasons to have an override available so yeah 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 oh Learning Center stuff. We have a new course. Nice. You know, for all those uh, people that are going to get access to on-shape simulation in the enter in the enterprise education space, you know this this will be helpful as well as all the other customers, of course, um, where you can take a course on on-shape simulation. So I haven't dived in here yet. Um, that's a familiar model, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, it's set up just like the rest of the OnShape uh, training, keeps track of your progress along the way and uh, has videos and a transcript to kind of help you around. So uh, really good to see that. Fantastic. So I think that is all that is fit to print. There's always some other little things that we don't create videos for that you'll find in the release notes. Yep, and, always uh, at the, can... yep, the bottom of the page there. Just click on that and it'll take you, take you straight to them. Always fun That's to read. Right. Uh, it's always fun to read through and, and see some of those little, like you say, you know, the, the the stuff that doesn't get mentioned in the initial post. But it's always fun to see some of the little things that that got changed or got updated or, frankly, got fixed. I mean, that's you know, we we still have to fix stuff every now and then. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, any other announcements that we'd like to make before uh, wrapping up the show here? Goodness. Um, well, there's uh, on shape live is coming up. Um, people should probably go ahead and start getting registered for that. Uh, it's going to be his third annual, right? We've done this Thir this third three, annual. Yeah. Yep, three we're, years we're in a row. March. Loretta will be, will be hosting again. We're going to hear from the executives. We're going to get a sneak peek from Bajrang uh, this year. Uh, we've got the design contest. Now the design contest hasn't been announced quite yet. It should be announced very, very soon. People are going to love this one. I already love this one because I know what it is. Uh, but this is going to be really, really exciting as part of Onshape Live. So uh, get over there and register. You'll be notified when the agenda comes up. Um, you can start looking at the uh, the classes that you'll attend or some of the sessions that you'll attend. It's going to be a great time. Um, going to be lots of people there virtually. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And then we also have LiveWorks. And we'll talk about LiveWorks a little bit more on some of our podcast episodes. We'll have some guests on that will be talking about it as well. So. Lots of good stuff coming up, and uh, I'll just quickly mention one more time, user group meeting, two hours from now. Um, I put the link in the chat there. Go ahead and register, and hopefully we'll see you folks there. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, definitely go. It's a lot of fun. A lot. It's always good to collaborate with other engineering colleagues around the world. So, yep. Well, another good show. Yep, we went for almost an hour this time, Mike. Yeah, lots yeah, of there good, was a yep, lot of lots stuff. Lots of good stuff in this release. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate when you folks come in and and chat with us. Um, it's great to see you all the time. And Mike, all right. it's always great to be here with you. All right. See you all later. <laughs>